Hi everyone, this is Karen. It is 4.30, 4.40 in the morning on December 21st. Only four more days until Christmas. I can't believe it. Just four more days. Crazy. Crazy. <laughs> are you done yet? <laughs> That's what everybody asks. Are you done yet? But um, this video is... Um, I'm hoping to reach a few people with it. Um... I get more than a few. Um, I'm on Facebook all the time with my friends and and doing posting silly things and Lord knows that I have been there where these ladies are that I'm gonna mention. I'm not gonna mention anybody's names, um, but I see posts all the time on Facebook anymore. Facebook has been a place to come post about your problems instead of a meetup place now to meet people and and um, excuse me to to meet up and, and an old friend and just say hi and see how they're doing and and a Facebook has become more of a a stomping ground for people who need um, someone to hear them out to need um, someone to listen and it is almost every single post that I read now has become about the oh poor me's oh poor me in my life what do I do this didn't work out I was in this relationship it didn't work out um, or you know I'm trying to pay the bill and it's not working out and and oh believe me I have had all of those I'm pretty sure some people on my Facebook friends list think I'm a little cray cray and sometimes I am <laughs> sometimes I am I am um, when the when you get so embedded deep down when you get so concentrating on your flesh, on your body, on your mind, on your thoughts, on your feelings, we as humans think about our feelings so much. And just an astronomical amount of the time, how do I feel? How do I feel? How do I feel? I'm in this kind of mood. I'm in this kind of mood. I'm in this kind of mood. So um, we are just totally embedded in our feelings just all the time and that gets us into a place of thinking about ourselves all the time and we were put here by the Lord um, to think about other people to do things for other people not just ourselves and you're probably going to say, blah, 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 here comes another God story, and here comes another video, and people are talking about God, and I don't want to hear this anymore, la, 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 <laughs> you know, um, but it's true, when I was, before I was saved, being saved means that you just recognize that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, and then walking in. The journey that God has for you. That's all. That's it, it, just that's what it means. And um, before that, I was totally deep, deep, deep within myself. And um, even though I could see what other people were doing to me, I couldn't see how I was reacting and doing to other people because I just couldn't. When before you come to God, your eyes are closed. You know, kind of you're just blind and blinded and to a lot of things. And once you come to God and you have an earnest um, heart for God, um, just a true heart, then he will open your eyes. And I see a lot of messages on Facebook about people are just so deep within themselves. There's a lot of pain, a lot of pain out there. I find this day and age, and, and, and I'm sure it has always been, but now with media and everything, and you know, just media is crazy now in this day and age. 
Um, you can post anything you want anywhere. You can vlog, you can blog, you can go on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can, you know, just everything. And we're always about ourselves. Um, I know a girl who, um, a lady, a lady who lost her nephew and ever since then she's been looking for love in all the wrong places. She's been with men, you know, sometimes one after another after another, looking for that love. And she gets disappointed right away when they're not the one. But she's, the problem with her is that, and I can say her problem because <laughs> it's easier for me because I'm not her. Um, you know, I'll tell you my problems at the end. If you really want to know, I'll let you know all my issues. Uh, if you um, already know me, you know them. <laughs> But um, she jumps into relationships hoping that he's going to be the one, the knight in shining armor, and is going to fulfill all her needs. And it never works because she allows them to, to cheat on her. She allows them to do what they do to her because she lets them. You know, she's been abused and um, beaten and taken so for granted and... I just wish that I could just jump in her body and 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 change all that, you know. I I really do. I know that I don't talk to her all that much, but I just wish that I could. Wow, seven minutes already. Just jump into her body and and just help her to realize her goals, her dreams, uh, the mistakes she makes as a woman to let men come into her life and do what they do, you know. Um. You know, a lot of posts on Facebook is, is about people that have passed away, you know. Um, and I can't, I've never lost a child. I never had a child. But I've never lost a child. And I don't know how that feels. I don't know how I, how I would get through any day. And it's, I can't imagine my best friend lost a child. Five years ago, he was ten years old at the time, and and um, every day she's hurting. Every day she's she's got that pain, and I'm trying to help her to to kind of come through it. And I wasn't there for many years. That's another story. Um, but I'm trying to help her now to come through it and to see that that in my eyes, I think that she's not holding on to her son. I think she's holding on to the pain. I think she's holding on to the pain of the memory of her son. I don't think that she's trying to... I think she's trying to hold on to him for dear life. His pictures, his memories, his, his possessions, and... I find it extremely difficult and I just, I being a little bit ignorant of the pain of losing a child, maybe a lot ignorant, um, would pray that she would start the mourning process. I think that if you're still holding on to all that pain, you really can't start mourning until you just let it go. And she's holding on to whatever she can, like a life preserver, like a life raft, just to keep herself afloat, just to hold on to anything, you know? And I just, I... And you can't tell somebody else who's mourning how to mourn, you know? Maybe this video is for me today, not for every, anybody else. But I just see so much hurt out there. You know? And yesterday at church, um, we learned about, um, 
a little girl who was who was dying. She was twelve years old, and in the Bible, and um, I forgot the name already. <laughs> Sorry, and um, the name of the father. I mean, and the father went, you know, t to to Jesus and said, "My little girl's gone," and you know, and um, and but the 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 sermon was more about how we feel like, why bother? Everybody has a why bother, okay, not everybody, a lot of people have a why bother attitude. Why bother? I've tried. Why bother? I've tried this way. I've tried that way. I've tried that way. You know, all the ways to the yellow book road, I've tried. And none of them worked. Why bother? And he didn't, I'm not sure if he said this or not. But you've tried your way, and it hasn't happened. You tried your way, and it hasn't worked. Why don't you try God's way? People say, oh, no, that's, that God stuff isn't for me. I'm an atheist. I don't believe in it. Or I'm not anything. I just don't believe in it, period. But why don't you try it? Giving it a try won't, won't hurt. It won't break your pride. Won't break your wallet, won't break your pocket. You know, giving God a, a, a try um, isn't isn't gonna hurt, you know, give it two months. If you can't stand two months, give it one month. It's not about church, it's about opening your heart to the Lord to receiving him. It's not about the church and the people in the church and 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 you know, it's 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 about God and it's about his plan he has thank you lord christopher wooler he has a certain path for you and this is this is god's path right this is your path and you and you're just walking along or jumping up and down and going back and forth and back and forth and 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 whatever this is your path but this is not God's path this is shaky this is round right this is a round marker if this is your path then you're going to be sliding off the marker and you're sliding off your your ground and and falling and, and tripping over and sliding off and everything but this is God he is flat you can't you can't slide off this one this is steady this is steady ground all the way God, that's God's analogy by the way um, this is steady all the way over all the way back and forth you know and you can go back and forth on this one if you're not listening to God but this is a lot steadier platform. See how thin that is? Than this one where you're going to be tripping and falling all the time. And this is your journey, what you want to be doing. And this is God's journey of what he wants you to be doing. Do you see the difference? Um, thank you, Lord. Um, so... We are on our own journey, and we think that we can do better than God sometimes. We think that, you know, God, I don't need your help. I'm good. I'm good. I'm golden. You know, I, I got this. Sometimes we're a little too proud to think that we need help. So, you know, we're like, nope, I got this. I'm, you know, I got it. I'm good. I'm good to go. You know, God, thanks. You know, um, <laughs> And um, it's just not that way. God, this is God. This is God. This, this is, he's got numbers. He's got, this is his timeline for you. You can see that might be backwards, might not be. This is God's timeline for you. This is sturdy. This is steady. This, this is, it just doesn't, you know, has a little bit of bend to it. So God is going to give you what you want. If it's in his will, as long as you're walking to his path. But this,
look right there it's a little frayed it's a little frayed you've you've this is you it's your path how can you be walking on something that's already been kind of sort of be torn down you know this is textured so this is one side of your path then you start walking and you get like to a step where it's it's not you can't pass it and then down here is a totally different path it's textured it's ribbed it's 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 different so you're gonna take this path with all these things and these different you know even if you're walking on this side here's like a little cliff that you got to kind of jump off of that little lip that you, that you got to jump off of this one you're just walking straight buddy you're just walking straight straight on that line and God wants you right there with him and yes you're gonna have to probably give up some things that you don't want to give up you know I can't tell you what that's for God to tell you you know I had to give up some friends I had to give up some family I had to give up some things in my life like cigarettes you know I'm not telling you to give up those things God will tell you what to do in his own time if you have a whole lot of things that you have to give up God is gonna start with the one that you can give up um, the most easily is the first and then he's gonna continue on with with you know but we're hurting inside and we keep on filling the void and filling the void and filling the void and filling the void we try to fill it with sex try to fill it with alcohol try to fill it with food I'm a foodie I, I've tried to fill mine with food. I've gotten fat and it don't work. Um, try to fill it with um, any kind of drugs. Try to fill it with um, porn. Try to fill it with whatever you got here. Even if it's not anything like a, like a sexual sin or alcohol. Maybe if it's not even that heavy. But you try to fill it with putting your expectations into somebody else. You know, having... if. The thing is, you can't come to a person and ask them to come into your life besides God unless you're fixed yourself. Unless you yourself are on that straight line. Because if what if you are on your line, right? And somebody else is on their line that's not gonna you might match and your view of the world you might match but these are both not God this is both flesh this is both human this is both what you want this is not what God wants I don't know if I'm making any sense to y'all <coughs> um, I've been with God for seven years I've been really devout, great for about two or three years. I've been crazy all over the place, you know? Um, it's, it's been a journey, but God is with me in this journey. You have your own journey, but is God with you on your journey? Have you asked God to be the center of your life? And it doesn't mean you have to give up everything. Forget, I want you to forget all your expectations of what you think God is telling you to do. I want you to forget all your notions, everything you've heard, and start out scratch, just at scratch, just at ground base. Forget everything else. This is between you and God. Not me. I'm not God. That's God. Up there. Between you and God. Now you can make a choice to be in self-pity and self-doubt and looking for love in all the wrong places and, and be trying to fill yourself with all these things for the rest of your life. Or you can make a choice today and live for God. Have I really lived for God? I wouldn't say so. I have not been the best daughter or the best disciple, but God has most recently opened my eyes. And I can tell you that this year is my comeback. 
2016 is my comeback. I'm announcing it right now. God already knows it. God, God, God knows. You know, it's my comeback from, from not eating so much, from eating the wrong things, from putting the wrong things in my body. You know, I might not drink, I might not smoke, I might not do drugs, but I still eat a whole lot of unhealthy food. And um, there's that, plus I need to exercise. I need to get out more. I need to do things that are out of my comfort zone. And that's just me, that I have to do this year. Maybe there's something totally different that you have to do this year. Maybe you have to trust a little bit more. Maybe you've been hurt. Maybe you've been just broken and totally not broken like, oh, my life is broken, but totally earth-shakingly broken, lying on the floor in pieces broken, like a glass of china just broken, and you're just, you have no idea how to piece yourself together. Every day, it's like you're living in the dark. You know, there's an answer, and his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. His, his name is Jesus. What's worth giving it, you know? What what else are you doing? You know, what else are you doing in your life that you can't try a month? I'm not saying forever. You know, forever can be later if you want it to be. You know? God wants you to just try. Just try, you know? <coughs> Most likely, you're going to end up respecting God more than you are being mad at Him. We humans, we love to blame God for all our issues. You know, I can't walk, you know, I can't see this line. And walk on this line. And say, okay, one day, I'm not, I'm not gonna, God, I'm not gonna dig what you say anymore, which is sometimes what I said. I'm gonna walk on my own line. I wanna do what I wanna do. So then you, so what happens at first, sometimes, sometimes, as you're here walking on God's line, right? And you get to a point where, like, I'm sick of doing this, and I want to do my own way. I just want to do my own way. And then we start walking our, on our own line, right? What do we do? We slip and fall. As soon as we choose what we want to do, instead of walking in God's line, instead of God's walking on God's journey, His path, His divine life for us, you know, I mean, we think we're steady. We think we're good to go. You know, after a while, we're like, nope, God, I got it. And you stop walking on that line. It drops down. You have this new line, and you slip, start slipping and falling. thing that y'all don't realize is you need God. You do. We all need God. He is. Yes, sometimes he takes things away from us. But did you ever ask him why? Do we ever ask him, why, God, did you do that? You know, like, <clears throat> what was the purpose? Not why, oh, why, God? Sometimes we have to do that, that why, God, because we need to shout. God wants us to tell him the truth. Even he, he doesn't want us to swear at him. I can tell you that. Oh, no, I've learned my lesson. Um, I have. He doesn't want us to swear at him, but he just wants, he wants us to be, <clears throat> excuse me, real with him. One second, I just need some water. My, my voice is getting. Three, two, one. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm back. I, I had some water and now I'm good to go. Um, so, yeah, we all think that we'd like to walk along to what we want you know we all think that we're we're making the choices that are best for us but believe me god is choices you know if god is god not if god is supreme god is has the plan you know and if we think that the choices we're making for us are so great how much greater are god's choices for us um, I wanted I want to share with you a little story, a little, a little testimony about myself. 
I was in an on and off relationship for about six years with somebody. I know it was turmoil and, and back then, before I was saved, I myself was, was crazier than I am now. And I wasn't, I, I was all about the feelings and all about feeling good and all that stuff. And even though I felt God's calling, I ignored it. And um, so finally, um, one summer I came to the Lord. You know, a friend led me there and um, led me to God and it picked up right away and right away I was thirsty for God I was hungry for God I oh Lord to be like that again when I was first became a real newbie baby Christ you know um, I had that thirst for God I had that hunger for God and um, so I, I found out that my guy was was cheating on me and and I got rid of him. I, I, I dumped him. Because whether or not I was with God or not, I wasn't going to have that in my life. I had my expectations, um, you know, to what they were, so that I was not going to accept that. Um, because if you accept that, what else will you accept, you know? So, um, so yeah. And then I had a hard time not pleasuring myself. Um, you know, I had had sex with this man on and off for six years, and and I may have called it making love, but it was sex, and um, then I had a hard time stop, I again pleasuring myself, and and um, I just every day, every day, and um, and pretty soon the Lord said to me. And when the Lord said that, it, so it scared me. I mean, it was, I think it was maybe about a year and a half that I was still afterwards. Yeah, a year and a half um, that I was still doing that. But when God really, right there, for the first time ever in my life, I had already lost, kind of lost my family for a while. We've already been estranged for a while. I already went through that. You know, I God it was one thing that I was not willing to lose. I, 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 I just was not willing. So, I stopped. It was very difficult. It was extremely difficult. People see me now and they say, oh, it's so easy for you. Oh, no. There were days that I cried and cried and cried. Oh, God, please take this from me. God, please take this from me. God, please take this from me. You know, please take the urge. Please take the craving. Please take the want of it away from me. I, I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed so hard. And and finally, um, with God's help and my prayers, he did. And um, it has been easier, but there are some days that are just, again, I'm not praying so hard. But it's still, the, the want is, that want is always there. It's like a smoker who quits smoking. You're always going to want that cigarette. You might not have that cigarette, but you're always going to want another one. And so, um, so yeah. Um, and it, it has been seven years now since um, I was with anybody. I will say that freely. It has been seven years. And um, I'm happy that it's been seven years. Um, I felt angry at God at first. You know, God, you're taking me away from sex at the prime of my life. I was 32 years old. I'm like, Lord, I've just figured out what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm sorry, but I just figured out what I'm doing. I'm supposed to be doing and, and all that stuff. And I, I'm, I'm really kind of good at it. And oh, that's what I thought. Anyway, I don't know. <laughs> and, um, you know, you're taking me from the prime, prime of my, you know, sexual peak. Um, and God did, you know, God, God did. And, um, I'm sure I could have, you know, if I wanted to just kept on going and God would, you know, have turned his face and, and all, that would have been history. But I was too afraid of losing God, of, of doing that. So it has been seven years now and the Lord talks to me and we have, you know, we, we just talk all the time and the Lord, the Lord has shown me 
you know, I've been, I've been praying for a husband and praying for a husband. And he said, lay it down. Lay him down. Forget about the husband for now and just focus on me. Lay it down. And every time I tried to lay it down, it was so hard. I, I felt like hopeless. Like I was like, you know, and I did the, oh, poor me is, oh, God, I'm too. Forgive me now, Lord God, because this is not how I feel. Just an example. Oh, Lord God, I'm too ugly to get married. You know, who, who would want me? You know, I'm too disabled to get married. I have a, a hunchback and, and my, you know, I have other, a lot of, a lot of issues. I'm too this to get married. I'm too fat to get married. I'm too old to get married. I'm too this. And I did that for a long time until the Lord kind of reprogrammed me. He, God reprograms you when you come to him. God reprogrammed me to see who I am, to see who he, he was kind of creating. And, and now it's been seven years and God has shown me my husband. God has shown me my husband. I have actually talked to my husband. I didn't know that at the time. And it's still kind of progressing and everything and it's going to happen. And, you know, the Lord wants me to just sit and be still and, and you know, and let the man pursue me. We as women are not supposed to pursue men. If they want us, they will come and get us. Okay, ladies? I know that's hard to think about. You know what? And maybe if a man isn't pursuing you right now, maybe you just got to kind of get, you have to get yourself together. This is the whole story of my testimony. As God had to get me together for all these years, not to stop masturbating, not to stop smoking cigarettes, not to stop smoking weed, not to stop eating so much food, but to get me reprogrammed to know that when I meet my husband, I am exactly the lady, the woman that he has intended for me to be. It has been a lot of hard work. And back seven years ago, I didn't think this, but it has been so rewarding. Ladies, you put in the work. Guys, you put in the work. And you just listen to God, please. You know, you will take years. You will add years to your life just by listening to the Lord. I am asking you, please. Don't waste your life filling the void. Don't, don't do that. Please don't do that. Listen to God. You think that I wanted to go seven years without having sex? You know, I, I'm sorry, God, I gotta say this. Even when the, the technician to move me around for my x-rays, when he touched my hips, I just got all excited and everything because I hadn't had a man touch me for so long. I mean, I know people might be laughing right now. And it is funny now, but back then I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> you know? Um, that's, that's, I just had to say that. But it is so rewarding. It is so rewarding. God is so good. And the only time God is not good is when we ourselves put expectations on God that God doesn't even have for himself or us. So please, I urge you to just try. I'm not asking for forever. I'm not asking for six months. I'm not asking for a year. Try a month, just really. And when you submit yourself to it and you submit yourself to God, things will happen. I promise you. I promise you. It might take a while. But don't forget that we have to get ourselves together before we meet our husbands, before we meet the one that God has intended for us. You know, I mean, I am still need a lot of work, but it has take seven years. I've been with God for seven years. I may not have been devout for all those years, but I'm still with God. You know, I'm still with him and he's still with me. He tells me, you know, the world tells, tells us how junky we are, how, how worthless we are, how ugly we are, how fat we are. The world is just constantly coming at us with all these things. But that's why you need God in your life. Because the world can tell you all these things, but once you have God's words in your ears telling you how cherished you are, how much of a beloved you are to him, how how beautiful you are. God tells me almost every day that I'm beautiful. This morning, 
you know, at four o'clock when I woke up, I said, good morning, God. I, I'm kind of like childlike sometimes. And I'm just like, oh, good morning, God. He's like, good morning, my daughter. He's like, you're very, 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 very. No, no. He said, you're beautiful. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. And really, honestly, and and you might get get bad flack from the world but once you have God in your ear God in your mind God every just everywhere saying how treasured I am you know God has told me many things that I, I can't repeat because it's 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 private between my Lord and myself but once you choose to put God above everything else is when God will choose to shine through you the most it has been hard very difficult I have had my my two-year-old moments stomping holding my breath until I turn blue you know you know oh god why oh why you know and but through all that through all the dancing through through all through all the the, the haziness through all through everything I still had belief in my heart that God still has a plan for my life. And it's not over yet. I still have a whole other testimony, more of a testimony to tell. This is just for right now. You know, if you're in a place that you don't want to be at, pray. I keep on telling people, like, pray, like, pray. I was in I was in a place that I didn't want to be at for a long, 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 long time, and every day I would pray, God, please get me out of here. I felt like, like I can't say what I felt because I don't want to read anything, and but I, you know, I prayed for a long time, and God got me out. He did. You know, you're not gonna win the lottery with God. You know, you're not gonna win a million bucks, most likely. You know, you're not gonna be living in rich mansions. You know, but there is a kingdom of heaven that when you pass away, you will so be part of if you choose to have Jesus, the Lord of your life. And if you're confused about who God is, who Jesus is, who the Holy Spirit is, I have more on my channel, Desires of Cat's Heart, for you to watch. And I'd like you to go back and watch the very first um, one about filling the void. And that will help you a little bit, I believe. I really, I really do believe that. Because it shows a little bit more of my testimony. And it shows a little bit more of what the mistakes that I made. And now my friends around me see that, it, you might see that I'm home a lot. You might see that I'm, I don't do anything as far as the world. But as far as God's world, I'm, I'm in it. You know, I, I pray, I'm... There's so much, just God will open your eyes. God will just open your eyes to just to see everything he wants you to see. It is just, it is not a hoax to tithe, to give away your money to the church. It is that God is so much more than that. Don't put any, whatever expectations on God you have, just totally erase and start out fresh. Try one month, try 30 days. What is 30 days in your whole span of your whole lifetime? Try 30 days. Just really try. You know, don't give up. For those 30 days, don't give up. And you will see God move through you more in those 30 days than you have your whole life if you have never come to God. I promise you that one. I will. If you try with your whole heart, everything, try. Not with your body, not with your feelings, just with your heart. And you, God will make you succeed. I promise. Love you. I'll talk to you soon. God will fill the void in your heart. You will not, will not feel so broken, so empty, so tired, so exhausted, so weak. God will fill that void. I promise. If you try. If you try. God said all you need is a, is a faith. is a, a, a little bit of mustard seed. A little bitty mustard seed. You know how small a mustard seed is? That's how much faith you have to have in order for God to work in you. A mustard seed. I want you to look it up online. Or buy them in the store. To see how small they are. And that's how much you faith and, and belief that God needs in you. For him to work in you. Love you. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hi, I'm back. Um, 
I'd like to ask whoever's watching this if you would like for God to be the center of your life, if you would like to ask Jesus into your heart to be your personal savior, I would like to pray with you right now. And if you're not ready yet, then just you could stop right here. But if you are truly ready and you feel it in your heart that God is calling you right now to say this prayer, then I'll I will say it with you. Okay. Father God, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Teach me. Grow me. Make me more appreciative of the things that I have in my life. And I pray that you would come. Holy Spirit, and come live inside of me. Lord, in your mighty name, we pray. Amen. And if you have prayed that prayer for the first time, you are saved. And you are now welcome into the kingdom of heaven. And you are a daughter or a son of the Most High God. So whoever has just done that, congratulations, my brother or sister. <laughs> and um, I just pray that um, you just give God a chance to, to live in your life, to, you know, the Holy Spirit is, is going to rise up you and dwell within your, within your heart. And um, God will just teach you. He'll guide you. He will show you if you're honest, if you're, that prayer was honest and true. And... Um, I'm just so heartfelt God will God will shine through you like you've never felt before you may um, I'm not gonna say what you will feel and you won't feel just um, give it a chance don't say okay it's been a day and nothing happened it's been a week nothing happened let it give it a chance just give it a chance and um, if you want to read the word the Bible the best place to start for a new Christian is in Matthew Okay, just read one chapter a day. Read one verse a day. If you're not, you ever have you ever read the Bible before? Read one little paragraph a day. Okay, if you want to read more, read more, but no more than two chapters a day to begin with, because that's a lot of information to retain. Okay, no matter what what um, level you are at in. in um, intelligence it's still for for a new christian in christ it's a lot so um i thank you for saying that prayer with me and uh, um welcome to the kingdom of heaven and um if you want you can if you want no pressure um you can just put like a little post on the bottom you know this first time you know first time saying that's prayer and um, if you want, you give me your name, and I'll continue to pray for you. But God already knows who you are. If you, if you want to stay anonymous, God already knows who you are. And I'll just pray in a general um, prayer um, for those who have um, said that prayer for the first time today. It's a long video. I've got to go. God bless you, and welcome. If you need, if you have any questions. I am here because I had many questions in the beginning. I am here for your questions, so feel free. Love you.